uh, you may now present um, yes, your slides. Ma. Hello, kita na po ba yung screen? So habang hinihintay natin, uh, I'm inviting everyone to be part of the premier humanitarian organization, the Philippine Red Cross. Hindi naman kailangan you are medically, medically inclined person, but number one requirement is that you always have the heart to serve others. And there are many services that the Philippine Red Cross can offer us. And I, as a teacher, I, I found one service that really uh, fits to my ability and that's the safety service uh, branch of the Red Cross and that branch is the responsible branch for training Filipinos of first aid and basic life support so if you are interested to be part of that such fulfilling uh, experience you may contact me or you can go to www.prc.gov.ph May mga interesado po ba? <laughs> Uh, paano ba yung protocol nila? Kasi yung suhin ko last time, mga ngailangan sila ng dugo, uh, may mga nare-require yung Red Cross. Ano ba yung basic uh, parang protocol para makakuha ng dugo sa Red Cross? Makakuha sir o makapag-donate? Number one requirement para sa lahat po no, to clear things with the issue, the blood is free. Uh, the Red Cross is offering a good quality blood that is uh, readily available for everyone. So libre siya. However, you're going to pay, uh, pay only the processing. The processing includes the storage and how the process of uh, making the blood uh, readily available for the safety usage. So, libre talaga yung dugo. So, everyone can uh, actually go to Red Cross and ask, what is the available blood for your uh, medical use? So, hihingan ka lang naman ng mga forms na Ang sabi ni Sir Duwad, you need to have like a card na nakapag-donate ka na ng dugo bago ka pa makapag-acquire ng dugo from Red Cross. So, parang in exchange of the blood that you get from them, you also have a record na nakapag-donate ka na rin. So, it is easier that way. So, Cherry Ablan has a question for you, Aaron. Uh, paano mo raw na manage na nag-training ka tsaka nag-serve ka sa Red Cross, may teaching work ka pa? That's a good question, ma'am. Actually, that time, uh, I was given a chance to take uh, study leave from the uh, JRU to finish my master's day or Thursday or Saturday. Or sometimes, if I, uh, the, class or, uh, the classes are canceled in the master's, especially in the UP, I dedicate my at least my time to the Red Cross. No? I go to the safety services, train people how to do CPR, teach people how to uh, to do first aid, no? And that's how I get the the time. So I don't waste time. So even though I don't have class in master, I took it as an opportunity to to serve pa din. Using your time wisely. So interesado talaga si Cherry malaman kung kailangan ng asawa. Kasi, you know, meron kasi ano ba, pag talin kay Ma'am Camacho, no, jowa. Tsaka dapat may ano, may time kung kailan ka mag-aasawa. Ano ba? Lumagay na ako sa tahimik after I graduated three years ago. Tahimik na talaga yan. I can say that marriage life is a, a quiet place. <laughs> a quiet place, a sacred place. That's okay. one thing I learned from a marriage life. So after I graduated 2011, three years after uh, my course in PNU, uh, I went to a quiet place. And I do hope Sir Nelson will do will also yes. go to a quiet place. Yes, go Nelson. It's not quiet, a silent place. So good morning, everyone. Uh, again, a pleasant morning to each one of you. I hope you are safe all the way in the midst of Typhoon. And we are praying that this Typhoon will uh, will live sooner. Happy Independence Day, by the way, to everyone. And po sa bawat isa. At kasarinlan na rin sa ating mga buhay. And today's uh, coffee talk will focus on COVID-19 testing and teaching. And before I begin, I would like to do disclaimer. As I mentioned earlier, we are majority here are teachers. So I would like to tell you that I'm not a virologist. I'm not a molecular biologist and I'm not a biochemist. But this uh, sharing will focus on the collective learning experience, insights, independent researches that I'm done involving into the testing. I was part of the testing uh, before the start of the pandemic. So it started last, uh, I think at the end of the March and April, 
the government uh, the government calls for volunteers or as i say we call them augmented person uh, personnel and by that i took a risk and the university of the philippines uh, blasted messages across the country recruiting uh, augmented personnel that will take part of the testing procedure aside from that i volunteered also to be part of the LGU testing uh, center, uh, the swabbing center in Manila for how many days? I think that is three days, but I was not involved in actual acquisition of specimen. So my experience uh, involves into the RITM, working to the molecular biology lab and working with the people there for I think a week or weeks, two weeks, and also working to the local government of unit in Manila for the collection of swab sample. And I also realized that this topic is not just about science and testing. I realized that COVID-19 testing is an interdisciplinary topic. It really touches our family, our community, your profession, at the same time yourself. Because I know after this talk, this is not just about learning. It is about awareness. And I would like you to build this uh, uh, sense that we are all involved in the battle with this uh, trying times. In these extraordinary times, we are all involved and we are all a part uh, on how we are going to overcome this pandemic. And I also like to share uh, time for you, uh, the effect of pandemic into teaching as a whole. What does pandemic brought us? What pandemic uh, change? What does pandemic remodels, especially in the educational institution? So without further ado, I would like to start with my outline. So I would like to start with the overview of the pandemic, specifically on the major scientific development and studies on COVID-19 related to testing. So we have here the structural biology of SARS-CoV-2, the pathogenesis. And later we will focus on the specimen collection procedure. And what does the government do to this uh, specimen? So as you heard in the news, the, D, uh, the Department of Health is strictly uh, doing some uh, checking or accrediting laboratories how to support, uh, how to deal with the testing. And finally, I reframe my uh, presentation into processing, how we process the sample. So if you have COVID center, how does the Subnational laboratory process the sample. And that involves the principle of PCR. I know most of you are here in biochemistry. I would like to make it as much as possible at the level that we can really learn and we can share to the family. And finally, what is the RIT and PCR detection base of SARS CoV 2? And lastly, the most important, I think, all of this. And we are now going to start on the overview part. So let's take a look first and talk about the structural biology of the SARS-CoV-2. As I mentioned, I'm not uh, a virologist nor a molecular biologist. I have learning experiences from the person I met in the RITN to the local government unit. And I did research and studied. So right now, if you are looking at the news, uh, the SARS-CoV-2 is the causative agent of the COVID-19 of the coronavirus disease 2019. And scientists identified that this uh, virus is a positive in the human province of China. And according to biological research, and I can say that this coronavirus is a zoonotic in uh, origin. So in the previous years, there are reported spill out, meaning there are now new uh, breed or new strains of coronavirus. Example is the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus, wherein the intermediate host is a camel. And it is passed to the human through close contact with severe acute respiratory syndrome, uh, 2003. Again, the origin is bad and it passed through severe cat. So the mode of transmission is close contact with the cat. Now, the SARS-CoV-2, believes to be transmitted through a pangolin, but other uh, hosts of the SARS-CoV-2. So there is still a mystery whether the pangolin is the intermediate host of the SARS-CoV-2. And the final host is siempre we humans. And 
I would like to also to reiterate that the, uh, the coronavirus that we are facing now is the seventh generation of the coronaviruses. And it is the newest member of the beta coronavirus group lineage B. Because there are several lineage of coronavirus A, B, C, and D. So at least we have now an idea what is the virus looks like and what is uh, the origin of this one. And if you will look closely to the structure of the virus, that it is called corona, because if you look at on the electron microscope, electron microscope is a special type of microscope that can really visualize a very small uh, particle like this uh, virus. So it resembles like a corona. Uh, you see this one on the screen with a spike. The virus is structurally made up of different proteins. So these proteins are very important and essential to the role of survival of the virus. So here I have a diagram of the virus, the SARS-CoV-2. So you can see there a, la a red color uh, protruding structure, a yellow, the orange one, and inside that, it's like a, a star inside. So this is just an illustration. So let me begin with the first structural protein. By the way, the structure of the coronavirus is made up of several protein. And one of that is what we call the spike protein. And if you already watched Mambi Camacho's uh, sharing on the molecular structure, maybe you will have a clear uh, knowledge and understanding what is this protein is all about. So this protein is very crucial for the binding of the whole cell. That's why people who have symptoms of coronavirus, uh, the health worker has to be very uh, very serious of taking the idea of PPE or the full protective equipment with dealing with the virus. Once inside your body, uh, this spike protein will have to bind to your receptors into the body. So that receptor is known to be the angiotensin converting enzyme two, an enzyme responsible for hydrolysis of angiotensin two to angiotensin one. If I'm speaking too scientific, so uh, I know you know the idea of the, the blood pressure. So the, uh, the ACE2 is very important for lowering our blood pressure. And it is found uh, in several organs such as the intestine, the heart, and the lungs, which is very crucial into survival of human being. So that's one uh, molecular uh, structure of uh, part of the SARS-CoV-2. Another one is the nucleoplasmid protein that is found inside the, uh, the virus, and it is uh, connected to the uh, genetic material of the virus, which is the RNA. So what's the role? It bound to the RNA genome to make a nucleocapsid. That's why uh, the definition of this virus is a single-stranded RNA virus, yeah, because there are viruses that are known to be, uh, their genetic material is a DNA. So the, the SARS-CoV-2, is an RNA virus. Another structural protein is the membrane protein M, which is the central organizer of the coronavirus assembly. So it's like a glue, no? to make the, uh, the structure of the coronavirus stable, it needs a protein and that's the membrane protein M. And finally, we have the envelope protein E, which interacts to M to form the viral envelope. So together with the E, together with the M, uh, they, uh, they make the virus uh, intact so that it can infect others. So this is the basic uh, structural uh, uh, analysis of the SARS-CoV-2. Again, if you want to learn more on this, you can visit Mam Big Schemato sharing on the molecular structure of SARS-CoV-2. Now, the question is, why physical distancing? Uh, the, the government is telling us Oh, you should have maintained a one meter or two meter distance to your fellow Filipino people. Why? Okay, because number one, this virus is really pathogenic and it spreads through droplets. Once you inhale the droplets, uh, you will able to have the SARS-CoV-2 inside your body. So the pathogenesis of this SARS-CoV-2 is divided into three episodes. So number one, once you catch the virus, Okay, you will be into what we call a symptomatic stage. And I know you heard the news, what is asymptomatic mean? So pag sinabi natin asymptomatic, uh, you have the virus, but you don't have the, the signs and the symptoms. 
but you will able to develop that in the later stage. However, some uh, people will not be able to develop these uh, signs and symptoms. And that makes coronavirus even uh, uh, deadly. And that's why there is an increased morbidity because of these uh, asymptomatic cases. And according to the uh, uh, researchers, as I mentioned earlier, this virus attaches itself to the ACE2. What makes it different to the other family of coronavirus? The spike protein of the coronavirus has 20 more, uh, uh, meaning uh, the affinity of the spike protein is greater compared to the other coronavirus, to the ACE2. The SARS-CoV-2 that infected us way back 2000 also uh, acts on the ACE2. However, the SARS-CoV-2 has a greater affinity with ACE2 meaning it binds to the receptor and it will not easily detach on it. So once it binds, it gets to their body and it hijacks the uh, cellular machinery of the body. So that starts the asymptomatic stage. And it usually uh, lasts for one to two days. So after one to two days, uh, you will be having a signs and symptoms of the uh, SARS-CoV-2, the COVID-19. And according to the World Health Organization, they would like to clarify the comments on asymptomatic spread, no? That there's much unknown. If asymptomatic people can really spread virus more compared to those symptomatic person. And they would like to clear the idea that the real one who really uh, causes the majority of the SARS-CoV-2 uh, infection or the COVID-19 or the asymptomatic, but they are trying to say that there's much unknown and we are still studying that uh, issue. After several days, the virus will travel down to your airway and conduct an air response. If you have a compromised immune system, dito nalalabas ang mga symptoms like coughing, sneezing, runny nose, headache, no? uh, difficult to breathing, and fever. And that is very obvious now that the virus is really a uh, cultivating to your body, dumadami na sila talaga sa iyong katawan. And 20% of the cases will reach this stage. So after, I think, two weeks, no, the person will suffer hypoxia and leading to acute respiratory distress syndrome. And these are the people who have uh, immunocompromised state. May mga matatanda, may mga comorbidity like hypertension, comorbidity like kidney disease, etc. So what happens here is that the SARS-CoV-2 binds to your lungs, again, to the ACE2, uh, ACE2 to the angiotensin converting AMS2 receptor, and it infiltrates our alveoli. So it goes to our lungs, binds to the receptor here. This receptor is crucial again for the binding of the SARS-CoV-2. And again, it will infiltrate the alveolar epithelial type 2 cells. So what's the importance of this cell? This cell is important for releasing the surfactant. What does a surfactant? Surfactants help us to breathe easily by lowering the surface area like a soap. So once it is infiltrated with the SARS-CoV-2, it will create or it will... Uh, uh, create uh, what we call immune response, causing migrations of immune cells like the monocytes and the macrophages. It will also release a chemical to our body in response to the, that particular virus. So what will happen is that there will be an increased uh, level, of, uh, level of fluid secretion to the alveolar level. So mahirapan ang humingin tao. And most of the cases, die because of the acute respiratory distress syndrome, especially for those who are el uh, elders, those who are weak uh, immune system, those who have comorbidity, but some survivors. So you were talking about the spike protein of the COVID-19 and... The pathogenesis. Uh, yes, at saka ano yun, yung kung anong effect. So for this moment, I will now uh, proceed to my uh, experiences as in, uh, one of the member of the SWAB team in the Del Pantondo, Manila. I guess that was on the first week of April. So there we collect samples of suspected COVID-19 specimen, by people from Tondo. And that's the reason why there are hard lockdowns in Tondo at that time because of an increased number of cases. So 
again, uh, first week of April, I was recruited to be part of the collection of specimen in the local government unit of Manila. Again, that was a risky task. And I can say uh, we have some sort of disagreement, especially in the family. Why are you going to involve yourself there? They were asking me, bakit ikaw? E may mga ano naman niya mas uh, competent. And I guess, sabi nila, uh, you're uh, risking also not yourself but your family. But I told them that this is part of giving away, giving yourself to the government, how you're going to help alleviate this. So I think we are done with the overview, how the virus, it, how it looks like in the biological term and how it infects our body. So for this time, I would like to focus now on my life learning experiences going to the LGU, to the local government of the Manila in the swabbing uh, uh, centers. I was part of the swabbing, uh, uh, swabbing uh, team, I think first, uh, first week of April. And this is a very risky task. That time they are recruiting a non-medical personnel as long as you have a background on how to properly uh, done this uh, collection uh, procedure. On my case, I don't, I don't receive a training, but they gave me a chance to, to be part of this, especially in documentary part. And I also observe how doctors, nurses, medical technologists collect samples from suspected COVID-19 patients. So now I would like to share to you those things that are important in the collection specimen of uh, the samples for COVID-19. So for the collection specimen or the specimen collection procedure, you need to have a material. By the way, before you go to the collection procedure, kailangan magsuot ng PPE. I think you saw the PPE in the, in the television, yung para uh, full, uh, uh, full body PPE. Yes. And you have to wear that yes. at least, uh, imagine for six hours, bawal umihi, bawal uh, pumupo. You have to endure that and that is really mainit sa katawan. Okay, napakainit niya po at the same time, before you, uh, you go uh, wearing that one, you have to scrub your hands all the way up to your forearm and you, you will be assisted by your partner in wearing that one because it is impossible for you to wear that to your own. Kailangan mo meron kang kasama isuot siya. And unfortunately, uh, we are not given a chance to take photo of the procedure on how to to wear that uh, a PPE. Kaya sabi ko, sayang naman, that's part of the ano, experience. So, paano kinukuha yung mga samples ng COVID-19 uh, specimen? Kailangan dito ng tinatawag na uh, COVID-19 collection kit. And it differs from local government unit. Maaring iba sa Marikina, sa Manila, sa Nabotas, Quezon City. But there is a kit that... Uh, you can find all the necessary materials for the collection of the specimen. We have the tube for universal transport media, you, you, the, uh, the one that has a red cap. Uh, you will put the, uh, the samples there, including with the chemical that preserves the sample. Because remember, this is a virus and it's an RNA virus, uh, very uh, sensitive for degradation. Kaya may nilalagay pa dyan, uh, uh, preservative a swab o oh, sinasabi nating uh, cotton bud but i would like to clarify things later no kung cotton bud lang ba yon kay a zip lock containing the absorbent pad a state health laboratory test requisition form and that's the the one that i'm handling no there is a form there that you will write the patient's name uh the where he lives and that no etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, if you are lucky, the, the, the local government is so rich, they will give you a, in the site a big ice pack. Okay, why? Because you have to put the samples there after you collected to the suspected COVID-19 patient. So these are the materials. Now, how do we, how the people collect it? So I observed doctors and nurses, you know, side by side, how they collect this one. Uh, get the swab inside the body. No, paano nila pinapasok, ano? So they give me a chance, okay? So, take a look at this, take, uh, how, how we do this thing. There are two uh, collection sites for COVID-19 specimen. One is for the upper respiratory tract. Uh, that includes the nose, the mouth, and, and the nasopharynx. The other one is the lower respiratory tract, 
which really includes the internal structure, invasive, the alveoli, and the conducting uh, airway. But I was given a chance to see how these things happen. I, I'm sure you, uh, you saw one of these procedures in the TV. So we have what we call the nasopharyngeal swab specimen. How it was done here as a diagram. So the person have to tilt the head 70, uh, 70 degrees, no? And the swab, no? The swab is not a, a simple swab for a cotton bud. A sterile swab, a synthetic swab made up of polyester. And this is a wooden stick. Because if that is a wooden stick and not sterile, definitely it will cause harm to the person and it will cause degradation of sample. It is inserted to the nostril part parallel to the hard palate. Okay, going down to the nasopharynx. At the, and you see the nasopharynx here in the diagram, the one that is near to the ear, okay, in the external structure. For a few seconds, the medical practitioner uh, will have to put it there and rotate a little bit and gently put it out and put it on the universal transport medium. Napakabilis, but I asked the patient, how do you feel? They say, I feel na naiiyak ako, I can't breathe. No, they are the uh, person experiences from the patient, anong nararamdaman mo? And it's very discomfort daw. Okay, that's the first uh, specimen collection procedure that is primary uh, prepared. So this is a swab, no? Uh, the sizes of the swab differs and the material also deeper. Pag nasa hospital, iba rin yung material. Pag nasa site, ganun din. So that's not common, the nasopharyngeal swab. The next uh, thing is the oropharyngeal swab or the specimen. This is somehow different to the nasopharyngeal uh, specimen. Here, you're going to collect samples not on the naso, nasopharynx, uh, nasopharynx area, but on the maaoral. I would like to clear that paano nila ginagawa ito, no? You have to open your mouth. They have a sterile... Uh... Hindi. Yung parang nakita ko na kung paano yung sampling ng swabbing. Ang hirap pala, no? Akala ko dun yung nose na ano, may specific angling. At saka yung type of material. Kasi in-imagine ko lang siya na parang plastic. So hindi pala siya yung hard plastic, kundi yung polyester pala ang ginagamit. So parang nylon na too hard para maipasok doon sa dulo ng ilong ng isang patient. Naisip ko nga halimbawa na nasa pharyngeal yung swabbing mo tapos pahoy siya, no? Nabali. Nako. Mm -mm. <laughs> Yan. At saka yung possibility na mabali siya tapos makapag-cause pa ng problem doon sa, sa nose mo would be something na ka, ano, kailangan ng material talaga na magbibend. So, that's a very nice material for uh, naisip nila na talagang polyester ang kailangan. Ang isa naman doon, yung sa oro pharyngeal, halimbawa ikaw yung nag, nagsaswab, tapos umatsing yung tao, di ba? Grabe, the, the possibility of being, ano, infected by an infected person. Oh, pag, pag ikaw yung pasyente, siyempre may hihiyakang nga 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 ka, di ba? Mm -hmm. So siguro, ipisip mo nalang yung masakit-sakit na nasa pa rin dyan. Kaya Mga... pala, yung mga, ngayon ko lang na-realize na kailangan, di ba, they, they said na they need uh, parang box na i, uh, ano dun sa mukha kasi posible pala yung bubuksan yung mouth doon kukunin yung sample. Yung um, box na, ano, yung polypropylene ba yun, na parang siyang shoebox na ilalagay sa mukha ng tao. And then, uh, doon may dalawang butas sa left and right kasi uh, yung mga safe para uh, sa ano, front line. Uh, yung laboratory box na merong butas na may pwede ka mag In a sense, uh, iba din talaga ang um, story ng personal mo na na-experience sa, sa field kung paano yung testing. Pag makikita natin sa experience ni Aaron, imagine ka six hours na hindi ka iihi. Oh, meron ako napanood sa sinyay sa akin sa Messenger. Mm -mm. Sa Hong Kong, imagine parang anim na layer ata yung sinusuot nila. Mula ulo hanggang paa. 
Tapos sabi sa akin ng kasama ko, mainit yan sobra. Yun ang problema nila. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Alam, I saw some sharing, di ba, yung sa, sa Facebook na talagang basang-basa yung kanilang uh, damit. damit. Pag, oh, oh, yung parang... Huwag ano eh. Hindi ka makamatay sa... <laughs> sa COVID, kamalapatay ka sa pool mo dahil patuyo yung pawis mo. Oo. Pero at the ko, hindi naman sila nag uh, 24 hours straight or let's say araw-araw eh. Kasi they risk, ano, iniiwas sila lang yung frequency ng exposure at saka yung duration. So, oh, parang pero, pag mag-collect ka, parang once, kung ikaw ay volunteer, i-confirm natin kay Aaron ha, Mm-mm. na ako ay, pwede, hindi ako pwedeng isang linggo ang doon na nag-volunteer. Parang meron akong post na let's say once a week lang ako or twice a week. Kasi ganun din sa nursing na mga nag-handle ng na mga pasyente in COVID. They cannot work lang usual routine nila na dire-diretso. So i-confirm natin mamaya sa kanya yung pagpunta niya ron, anong ginagawa niya before, during, and after. So makikita natin nakakaiba talaga itong swabbing na atong collection. So, hindi mm-hmm. lang yung ordinary field ng mga biology na pupunta sa site, magpipicture-picture, diba? sa mga ecology sa field natin, sa NYCM, pero ito ay mm-hmm. mukhang talagang battleground. So, nagkakaroon mm-hmm. ako ng idea na, ah, okay, talagang iba yung scenario. It's really a battle. Parang sundalo kang pinapunta ron na iba ang labi. Mm-hmm. Nakaka- nakakaawa pala talaga yung mga frontliners. Oo, hindi lang lalaitin, yung talagang parang persona, persona non grata o pandidirihan ka ng mga kapitbahay mo kasi bakit positive ka when in fact you are there serving other people. At saka yung the fact na we wanted to go out out immediately after the quarantine kasi akala natin okay na but then uh, even the sampling can be very difficult tapos tumaas na rin yung cases ang cases niya around 24,000 1,100 siguro maganda rin natin itanong kay Sir Aaron so yung pasyente yung kinukuhanan siyempre minsan may sa tingin ko may briefing debriefing yung mga pasyente mm-hmm. parang sa Sa AIDS na bago ko. Hello, back again. Oh, okay. Ito so, talaga. I went kanina sa Mars ngayon. Sa, medyo malayo na. <laughs> Nasaan ka na? I guess I have to stay the, uh, sa rooftop na talaga eh. Sa, sa bandang bubong na talaga eh. We have difficult uh, signal, experiencing siguro. the signal. The signal ang hirap. Okay, and... Ron. Ilang araw, oh, kasi na-stress ka na sa kahahanap ng space mo. <laughs> na pag-usapan namin na uh, six hours of being in the PPE is too much. Tapos, ilang beses ba per week ang service ng volunteer? Kailangan ba ng once a week or two weeks? I volunteered twice a week. Twice a week. Twice a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, that time kasi, uh, we lack personnel. Talagang kulang ang local government unit natin and they called for volunteers that time. Mm. Especially assisting the swabbing uh, part for the collection. And uh, think of that. That is first week of April. And we only have limited numbers of accredited subnational laboratory for taking the samples. Kaya <laughs> the only credential I showed to them that they will allow me to join this uh, risky uh, part is my master's degree since I'm staying in the UP for the past months. <laughs> so pinagbigyan nila ako and they are... Nagbigay sila ng ano na si Piper Mahan that whatever happens to me <laughs> hindi daw nila sagot. And sabi oh. ko and I take the risk. I take the risk just to uh, just to be part of this uh, uh, just to be part of the solution especially these trying times. Mm-mm. So I've learned very uh, learned a lot wearing the PPE that time, no? Number 1, urination will not be part of your life for 6 hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Second, no drinking, eating for six hours. Wow. Talagang medyo papayat ka doon kasi pag hindi ka sanay, uh, you really have to endure those stress. But I'm very uh, happy that I endured that. And it really gives you some idea of life, no? Sometimes you really have to suffer to learn something new. 
Mm-mm. Next time ay nawawala po ako, baka nasa ano na ako. Nasa <laughs> water tank. <laughs> yeah. This is part of the new normal po talaga. So I'm back here I think in the specimen collection procedure again. I'm telling you this story because I would like you to share this one time to your family also. What to be in the uh, what to be in the scenario of being a, a COVID-19 uh, patient. So we're done with the nasopharyngeal swab specimen. So nakita niyo po ba yung sa oropharyngeal uh, swab specimen? Okay. Yung and, yung mouth lang. Yeah. yeah, okay. Paano kinukuha ito? It's different. So kanina ang sa ilong, this time uh, if the nose or the uh, the nasal passage is black a uh, black So let's say uh, the uh, structural uh, uh, defect on the nasal passage, uh, the medical professional or the doctor will have to do the orogy, uh, oropharyngeal uh, specimen collection. So the, sim- uh, napaka-simple, the patient have to tilt the head 70 degrees and open the mouth. So again, a swab will be inserted but with care. Bawal kasing dumikit yung swab sa ipin sa dila but only in the nasopharynx area in the tonsil. So they will get sample there for about few seconds. Then kailangan nila ng uh, a depressor, a tongue depressor to clearly see the tonsil and the nasopharynx. Then this is the swab sample. Meron ako sa bahay na uwi isa. Yung swab talaga, not the sample yan. Yan yung picture niya. Okay, it's smaller compared to the nasopharyngeal swab. Okay, and then place it to the universal transport media. If this two uh, is inaccessible or hindi talaga po pwede, meron namang other uh, route. No? Sa, na- uh, sa ilong pa din, no? sa nasal, uh, we call it nasal mid-turbinate. So they collect sample but not on the nasopharynx or the oropharyngeal route but on the mid-turbinate of the nasal area. Hindi siya tatagos ng malalim, but only on that mid portion. Okay, and the swab is different compared to the first two swab. Okay, ito yung itsura niya. Okay, and I asked the doctor, why doc, you have a different swab? Okay, the reason is that the sensitivity of the mid turbinate compared to the, 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 the rest of the two. Yung the rest of the two kasi mas madaling kumuha ng specimen. And dito medyo challenging siya kasi you really have to be careful. Now you have to hit the, the mid uh, turbinate of the nasal uh, area. And finally, uh, isa pang common is the anterior nair, sa ano lang, sa nostril part lang, okay? Pataas, here the patient uh, have to be again till his or her head uh, 70 degrees. Doon papasok yung uh, swab, then the doctor will rotate or the medical personnel will rotate several times to the nostril area. If one nostril is inaccessible or there is some defect, they will have to try on the other nose tree. And here's the example uh, swab. It is called a plaque swab. As compared to the first two swab na ginamit sa nasopharyngeal uh, specimen and or- uh, oropharyngeal specimen, this swab is somehow different. May mga parang small spikes siya. The reason is to easily collect specimen on that area. And someone is joking, what, what is that? Sa mga Pilipino term then, Eh, sabi natin, they call it kulangot. No, sabi ko, I would like to clear that's not the kulangot that is being collected on the anterior near, uh, area. No, Still, uh, all of this collects respiratory secretion on the epithelial cells of the upper respiratory tract. Now, what if the patient develops severe syndrome? This for a uh, specimen procedure will not be possible. So, ang ginagawa sa hospital is the invasive one. Okay, by the way, before to proceed to the invasive one, I would like to show you an actual uh, specimen stored into a universal transport medium. Okay, this medium is uh, spe- uh, is important to preserve the structural integrity of the sample, especially the virus. And there are a, a varieties of uh, trademarks or brand that we can get and I, I can say for myself ano yung ginagamit ng other uh, swab collection center. But most commonly, ang ginagamit nila is Copan. I have here a picture of Copan. Yung red one, solution red one, 
is the universal transport medium solution and that is uh, readily available to the swabbing centers. Binibili na po yun ating mga local government unit and national government such as the Department of Health. If the patients uh, develop severe uh, sin uh, symptoms, this for a uh, specimen collection procedure is not be able to guarantee that the, uh, the specimen will be able to be collected properly. Kasi once there is a mistake or a contamination on the collection procedure, the processing will affect and there will be a false uh, sense of result, especially in the part of the reporting. That's why mahalaga pa lang, dun pa lang sa part na yon, that there will be a good collection procedure. If the patient develops very severe sign and he cannot stand, he cannot sin, this is the option, the bronchoalveolar lavage. This is a very invasive procedure when the doctor uses a bronchoscope. I've seen this one in Santa Ana Hospital. No, only in the dunas alabas ng kwarto, no. Okay, a bronchoscope will be uh, inserted to the patient's uh, mouth, oral cavity, down, going to the pre. Uh, bronchial part of the respiratory system. This time, it's not on the upper respiratory system, but on the lower respiratory part of the patient. So, anong ginagawa dyan? Ito yung mga kasama niya, no? It's very scary to see a patient, uh, uh, nakakita ka ng ganyan, no? Probably, that's uh, nasa ICU yan, no? Or, most probably, ito mga patient na ito, nasa isolated area talaga. Ipapasok ka ng doktor, and they will uh, collect a secretions on this area, doon sa bronchial part and to the alveolar, minsan sa alveolar part. And hindi na ito nilalagay doon sa universal transport medium in a much larger collection uh, medium. And that will be submitted to the subnational laboratories for COVID-19 testing. Do you have clarification, ma'am and sir? Just go. Okay. So, once the samples are collected, saan na ito dinadala? Okay. So, you already collected the sample. So, this will now uh, go to the sub-national laboratories. So, ang ating national laboratories for COVID-19 testing is the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine. But they are now at least 41 accredited sub-national laboratories that are capable of handling specimen uh, and at the same time uh, handling uh, processing of these uh, samples. At kung nababalitaan nyo sa news, uh, meron talagang mga laboratories na it takes time to be accredited. Matagal. And one of that LGU na talagang nakipag-away na is the Mariki uh, Marikina City government. Why it takes too long for the government uh, to accredit such laboratory? The reason is one, biosafety. Uh, for your information, handling a SARS-CoV-2 sample is very uh, risky. In the past uh, pandemic, ang hinahawakan ng uh, uh, RITM is the mers cov and the sars cov So, in order to have a laboratory to, uh, to process the sample, it must have a biosafety level 2. I mean biosafety level 2? This is a kind of uh, laboratory that can handle a uh, uh, live pathogens such as SARS-CoV-2 that can cause uh, a deadly uh, effect to the body. Unlike in a simple laboratory such as Biosafety Lab 1, that's uh, they're following general mi uh, microbiology laboratory practice. But for Biosafety Laboratory level number 2, they must have a specific equipment to contain the disease. So, dapat meron yung Biosafety level 2 cabinets a PCR machine, a sterile uh, pipettes, a consumables, sterile consumables, and a containment procedure if in case the virus escapes from the container. Kaya may mga issue that time why there is such a very slow processing of that uh, accreditation. The answer is not very slow. Hindi naman mabagal talaga. It's a meticulous process. It's a tedious process for the government to ensure that the person working on the laboratory at the same time, the environment is free from containment of the SARS-CoV-2. Kaya hindi basta-basta binibigay yung accreditation for the laboratory to conduct uh, handling of this specimen. And we are now having at least the last uh, 
few weeks, uh, the DOH is boasting us that we aggressively increasing the capability of the Philippines in terms of addressing the deficit in the national laboratory procedure. So marami na tayo ngayon mga laboratory that can handle these processes from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. I guess I have to share to you my screen again. It's out. May tanong ako, Sir Aaron. So you, regarding nyo sa duty mo, so duty ka doon ng twice a week, tama ba? Yes. Uh, yung sa pag-duty mo na yun, kasi interesado ako doon sa feedback sa mga pasyente. So meron kayong pagkakataong ma-interview yung pasyente, yung kahit mga simple yung chit-chat nyo lang sa kanila. May ganun ba? I have one, uh, sir. Uh, I interviewed one kasi matanda na siya eh. So I reviewed her and asked number one, yung history niya. And usually we ask the history talaga, yung interviewing process muna. And after that process, I asked her, sabi ko, uh, ma'am, uh, what do you think is the main reason why are you here? Sabi ko, bakit ka nandito po? Hindi naman daw siya lumalabas ng bahay dahil sa kanyang edad. What surprised her is that she still develops the signs and symptoms of the COVID-19. And that is really gives me an idea talagang delikado itong sakit na ito that drives us into new normal. And I also interviewed one, bata naman siya, I think seven years old na ng swab. And uh, sabi niya sa akin, Kuya, I never go out of home. Sabi niya, hindi naman siya lumalabas din. But again, he developed signs and symptoms. And I realized na ganun pala talaga nakakatakot yung COVID-19. And right now, we are going back to work, and I would like to uh, ask everyone's uh, strict uh, compliance with the government, especially with the health protocols. No, Hanggat maaari nga dapat, uh, we have, uh, wag muna tayong lumabas if we are not, hindi naman talaga kailangan. Okay? And always wash your hands several times. Siguro kung ahawa ka sa doorknob, you really have to wash it at least. Yun nga yung sinasabi ng government and the World Health Organization, at least 20 seconds. Okay? Medyo ma nakatakot po talaga. In terms of the biosafety laboratory and the DOH is saying that we are aggressively having that laboratory. So if you have a suspected COVID patient to your, uh, sa lugar nyo, uh, the nearest uh, sub-national laboratory testing or the laboratory, dun dadali yung sample niya. So if I'm in Manila, we are blessed that we have a lot of laboratory testing uh, centers here. Dun mo, uh, dun dadalhin yung samples. Okay, I have we have here the UPNIH, no? Stingo pinakamalapit. We have also the San Lazaro, no, sa Manila. And here are the list, partial list of the biosafety accredited laboratory of the DOH. You can visit the their website. To look on the laboratory that is capable of testing and uh, validating the result of the swab specimen samples. So, as uh, I uh, that's the reason why it takes too long. No? There are lags to the result because uh, some laboratories are not really capable of doing mass uh, processing of these uh, samples. It takes really time, although they said it's 48 hours. Now, how did they process this one? Ito yung medyo scientific in nature, no? Medyo heavy ito, no? So once the specimen is collected, it will undergo the processing na. And the gold standard for COVID-19 detection, for your information, and you can share it to your family, is no other than the PCR. Baka iniisip natin, ah, meron naman anti, ano eh, uh, the sero, uh, serological kit test, o yung tinatawag na antibody. I will not assure you that the result of the antibody will give you a positive result compared to the gold standard, which is the polymerase chain reaction. And here, I think I, I will give you some uh, scientific uh, ideas how does PCR work. I worked with the molecular biology, uh, biology lab of the RI team for a week. And from that, I learned some uh, biological skills on how these things work, okay? Basically, if you are dealing with PCR, okay, we are talking about the idea of genome. Okay, sa mga non-science teachers, okay, isipin nyo na lang yung genome is the, the uh, your identity, okay? 
what you are now is because of your genome. Kung ano yung genome ng nanay mo, tatay mo, ikaw yun. But in the sense of science, the scientific sense, no, a genome is comprised of the entire genetic or hereditary information of an organism. Pag COVID-19 ang pinag-uusapan, the genome of the virus is important for the processing of the, the test result. Okay, and that is the single-stranded RNA molecule of the SARS-CoV-2. Uh, the RATM uh, works with several viruses like the SARS-CoV-1 and the MERS-CoV. And, uh, and I can say that I realized bakit ang RATM is called the National uh, Laboratory Testing for this one because of their ability to uh, process the samples. So pag pinabi natin PCR, PCR is a short term for polymerase chain reaction. So ano to? No split na ito, ano? It is a method for making virtual unlimited copies of DNA sequence of a pathogen. So ang PCR po ay ginagamit for varieties of application for medicine, uh, molecular testing, uh, saan pa ba? Sa forensics, mahalaga ang polymerase chain reaction. And ang other word nga dito is enzymatic chain reaction. Why? Pag sinabi kasi poly means many, pag dinuktong ang polymerase is an enzyme. Okay? Responsible for, for going the process. So, if you're dealing with polymerase chain, isipin nyo lang meron kayong photocopy machine. Okay? You have a single page of your book. You want uh, lots of copy of that single page. So, you take that single page, you photocopy that, and you have a lots of copy of the particular page. So ganun yung simpleng idea niya. You are virtually making an unlimited copies of the DNA sequence, but not the entire sequence. Ang sinasabi ko, kung meron kang book, you are only getting the page of the book, and that you're going to be copied. Same thing with the PCR. You do not take the whole genome, but you target a certain uh, gene or a segment of the DNA, and that will be copied to the PCR machine. Okay? So, paano gumagana yan? Uh, in order for you to run a PCR, and what I've learned in the RITM and to my research in UP, number one requirement, you have the material. Running a PCR, I can tell you, napakagastos po nito. That's why you can uh, hear in the news that there are many uh, countries that giving us these supplies kasi napakamahal niya po. When I'm doing my research in UP, I spent 100,000 pesos for the PCR study. Napakamahal niya because if you have to chemicals that is not readily available to your laboratory, you have to get it to the other country and dapat alam mo kung paano gamitin because if you're going to waste the material, therefore you're wasting money and effort. So to run a PCR, kailangan may PCR machine ka. At ang sabi ko nga, it must be a biosafety laboratory accredited number to ang inyong facility. A PCR machine is a machine that runs uh, the reaction. At ang kailangan mo dyan, number one, a sterile environment and consumable. In chemistry, I learned, ang uh, atin naman usually test tubes, no? pipettes, Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, siguro, there are, we, have, we also have uh, setups for different uh, experiment. Naalala ko sa, yun, sa isolation ng caffeine, yun. But in the PCR setup, it's a very different setup. Kailangan paggagawa ka very clean, very sterile na environment. Lahat ng gagamitin mo kailangan malinis because you are handling a very delicate sample RNA. RNA can be degraded easily by RNAs. Yung RNAs na yan, yun yung enzyme na nakakabit sa pawis ng kamay mo. Kaya when you go to the biosafety laboratory too, kailangan nakapull PPE ka rin. You need to contain yourself and to contain the environment. So, kailangan may target DNA ka dyan. So, in the case of SARS-CoV-2, no, hindi mo kailangan lahat copy nyo. There's only a target portion of the SARS-CoV-2. And by the way, PCR is specially designed for DNA. And later, we will see, paano naman yung mga viruses like the SARS-CoV-2? You also need a primer. For those uh, already have an idea what is a primer, Primer is a short, uh, short chain of nucleotide, okay? So, maikli lang ito that will flank no, to the DNA as soon as it's 
unwind to the PCR process. May dalawang klase ng primer. We have the reverse and the former primer. So in our modern time, hindi na tayo mahihirapan, lalo na ang Pilipinas sa pagkuha ng mga primers to detect COVID-19 present because these are readily available from other countries na ginagawa na. On my study in UP, uh, we have a local uh, local company here na gumagawa ng primer. So just get the sequence, create into the computer, then you will have your primer. And the nucleotide, the nucleotide, the DNA polymerase, the buffer, and the magnesium fluorides are all can be, uh, can be bought into what we call testing kits. Itong testing kits na to, hindi mo na yung gagawin. You have to order that and make sure that when you order, that is compatible to the PCR machine at the same time to the consumable. When I'm referring to consumable, these are the PCR tubes, the one that you can see on the screen. Dapat, everything is compatible. That's why there is an issue. Bakit ang mamahal daw na mga kinukuwang kagamitan na mga ibang laboratories accredited by the DOH? The issue is the compatibility. And kung meron ka mas mura and that's not compatible, there's a big issue. So that's the component. So how it works? So ang PCR will work with this one. No? Very, ano to, complicated. But for the, para lang mapabilis, ano, there are three steps, uh, basic steps for PCR. Number one, it's a denaturation. Since we are dealing with DNA, it's a double-stranded structure and uh, held together by a hydrogen bond. Kailangan ang tinatawag natin, mga, tinatawag na denaturation process. When you put your samples to the machine, a machine is known to be a thermal processing machine. So umiinit siya and lumalamig. It's a thermal uh, cycling process. There's a process of heating, cooling, heating, and cooling. So the first step to amplify, to create many copies of that is to denaturation. So pag may COVID sample ka, dapat DNA siya, it has to denaturate to, to the maximum uh, temperature of 95 degrees Celsius. And it depends on the kit. Iba, ibang testing kit, 94. Sa na 95. Okay? It will unwind the, the uh, double-stranded DNA. So after that, it, there will be a cooling process. Okay? So the cooling process is known to be the annealing. The temperature downs to 55 degrees Celsius. And that's the point that the primer, the short sequence of uh, nucleotide that you need to be targeted in the DNA will bind on it. Sabi ko nga, dalawa yan. The primer that is uh, forward and reverse. So that primer will bind to the three prime end of the strand of the DNA. By the way, if you look at the DNA, no meron yung mga five prime and three prime end. It will bind to that. The reverse and the forward. Okay, together with the DNA polymerase on the step three, there will be an increased level of temperature and that will call elongation. The DNA polymerase brand is known to be a TAC polymerase. It is derived from a bacteria. It will bind to the primer and it will elongate adding the nucleotides. Again, I would like to clarify that everything uh, you see here is just a diagram. Uh, I'm planning to show you the actual setup of the laboratory. However, to make a, a more simple at the same time, as much as possible, ma mas madali, no? I would like to show you the simple process of PCR. Now, the problem is, uh, the, uh, the virus itself is an RNA, single-stranded. Kasi nga, sabi ko, you need to have a DNA. Now, every cycle that there is unwinding, annealing, and elongation, uh, the portion of the DNA is being copied. So the problem is, what about the DNA? Uh, the as RNA, the SARS-CoV-2, rather. So dito gagamit ng tinatawag na reverse transcription, polymerase chain reaction, and that is the gold standard for COVID testing. Ang ginagawa dito sa lab is you first isolate the ribonucleic acid or the genome of the SARS-CoV-2. Now, once you isolate that in the laboratory, you convert that to what we call complementary DNA. So paano ginagawa yon? It's the same process with PCR. However, you will make use of what we call reverse transcriptase, an enzyme that creates a complement of the RNA, making it a double-stranded. So pag double-stranded na siya, it can now go undergo the PCR. So uh, right now, in our present time, and, I, 
and I visited some of the subnational laboratories, they are now using kits. So meaning to say, wala silang problema when it comes to preparing it. What I'm telling is the kit is there are no procedures that you need to follow. Just follow the procedure and you will able to get the result. And RITM, uh, by the way, I would like to share you this one. This is the genome, the entire uh, genetic material of the SARS-CoV-2. In, uh, in getting the primer, usually they get the spike protein, the N. Remember, can you the N and the E and the ORP, uh, ORP F1. So when dealing with the primer, the laboratory will have to take a targeted part of the RNA. So we'll, that sample will be targeted and they will make primer. So again, you are no need to uh, sequence the whole genome, just a portion of it. Then it's ready for PCR. For the specimen that uh, that we get from the swab, ganun din yung ginagawa. Okay? Now, how is uh, being processed OLED? So, yan, we have RNA, cDNA to the PCR. Now, for the RITM, they have a different way of processing it kasi nga sila is sub-level to laboratory. At the same time, I heard that this is already a basic, uh, neat basic, no? Biosafety Laboratory Number Three ng RATM. So ganto nang ginagawa nila. Once you get this, once they get the sample, they will have to put it on the LIS, write it on the computer database, para meron silang copy. Now they don't do RNA extraction right away. What they did is inactivate the virus. How do they inactivate that? There are three several ways of inactivating the virus. And the was, uh, one common that I witnessed is heating. When you heat the SARS-CoV-2 to a certain temperature, 56 degrees Celsius, it will inactivate the protein structure of the virus. Not the RNA, but the structural protein of the virus, causing an inhibition or infecting the laboratory personnel. So, hindi na sila mahawa. No? Then once they did that, they do RNA extraction. And I cannot, I guess I cannot explain to you the whole process, but again, when you do RNA extraction, here you can see there are many kits that are available. Maraming kits na na-available dyan. No, I guess you know, uh, when I do my research in UP, sabi ko nga, RNA extraction kit, depending on the sample, ranges from 30,000 to 100,000. And that's only for RNA extraction. Okay? Yan yung mga chemicals na ginagamit, depending on the brand. Kaya dyan is an international brand. And I guess most laboratories using Kyogen for their RNA extraction. Once they did RNA extraction, they get the genome, they lysis it, destroy the structural protein, and isolate the pure RNA. We now proceed to the PCR setup. As you can see on the upper right picture, these are consumables. Uh, meron kayong makikita dyan na parang ano, a fume hood. That's not a fume hood. That's a biosafety level number to safety cabinet that is capable of containing uh, the material at the same time, preserving the RNA. Kailangan ma-preserve yung RNA because contamination is a very risk in the laboratory. That's why kailangan talaga, you have to carefully handle those samples. So may makikita kayo mga box na malilit. Alam niya na may pipette tips. In laboratory like uh, microbiology, we are using the micro pipettes. No? Yung talagang, it can measure microliters. And for a PCR run, there are now available uh, steps para makulay, uh, steps so that you can uh, uh, go to the reverse transcription process. Once you get the RNA, you can now uh, convert that RNA to the complement, uh, complementary DNA structure. Then finally, you go run to the PCR run, uh, PCR setup. Here you can see a PCR machine. It's a bi-rad. It's the same uh, PCR machine I use in uh, conducting uh, molecular diagnostics in RITM and, and my thesis. Jan is set up nyo yung denaturation temperature, the annealing temp, and the uh, elongation. Now, ano lang, uh, idea lang. Again, this is a very uh, complicated topic, but I hope uh, pag kayo ay gumamit ng PCR machine, you, know, you should know the machine itself. Okay, a machine, a PCR machine is how, kung tatanong kayo kung magkano yan, that's 1 million. Pag kayo ay hindi marunong at nasira yan, you're losing a lot of money. Okay? And finally, analysis. PCR, and tradi uh, the traditional PCR, the product is uh, read by what we call gel electrophoresis. But on a 
RT-PCR, reverse transcription PCR, it's a real-time detection of the presence of the antigen, especially the virus. Kaya siya tinawag na gold standard because if you have only a single virus to your body, you have it, you can amplify it, and you will be able to see it on the real time how much uh, it is being detected. There will be colors that will be given on the machine. It depends on your setup. You want a green color, a red one, a blue one. No, it depends on the setup your PCR. Every setups that you will do will depend on your protocol. And that protocol will be coming from the laboratory, coming from the kits. So you have to work on that. Okay? So that's the, the process of dealing with the virus. Now, ngayon, paano pag may positive? Okay, ganito yan. Uh, in, the, in case of may mga positive, hindi yan agad-agad nire-report sa mga tao. Okay? Uh, bago makarating yan dun sa hospital, ang DOH muna makakaalam yan whether the person is positive or not. Kaya minsan, uh, nagtatagal din yung proseso because nagkakaroon ng mga backlogs. And that backlogs really uh, uh, affect the result of our uh, COVID-19 testing. At yung curve nga natin, minsan mapapansin nyo pa iba-iba because of the backlogs. Okay, I hope I make myself clear. Do you have any clarification? Can you still follow? Yes, nakakasunod ako kasi when I had my master's in 1997, Sa journal ko lang na babasa ang polymerase chain reaction. Ngayon, alam mo na na hands-on na ang Philippines on that after 20 years. After 20 years, hands-on na tayo. So, uh, better na ang ating research capability sa Pilipinas. Yes, ma'am. That's true, ma'am. And I'm also uh, positive that one day, our school will able to conduct a PCR run. No? Sana all schools uh, as part of their science courses will able to run a basic uh, molecular uh, or basic molecular biology uh, test uh, experiment. And that's one big leap to our educational uh, system. Okay, now, what's the impact? Okay, so I, I hope you heard this news. Okay. There are no active cases now in New Zealand and they are now starting to lifting almost all its coronavirus restriction. So if you read this article, it will give you a very good sense that some countries are now winning the battle. Na, 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 na tayo. Sad to say, a uh, majority of, of other countries abroad is still uh, winding up and in the, to the hope that they curb the virus down. So sabi nga natin, the word for today is new normal and flattening the curve. Now, what's the impact? I realized that involving to a COVID-19 testing, I realized, I realized that one hard hit sector of our country's education. It's very unorthodox to us to utilize an e-learning platform. I can say to myself because I'm not used to compute, especially into teaching. And we are all in ch uh, challenged to this new normal. And I can say that we are hard hit because napakabilis ng pangyayari. And I think I can say to the other sectors of other uh, society that they are also hard hit because of this pandemic. I guess in terms of teaching, there are three important uh, I said factors that are really affected in terms of this uh, pandemic. Sa COVID-19 testing, if we really wanted to, to see what is really happening, we need to do mass testing. I know most of you are very uh, very into the word mass testing, ano? Gusto natin ang mass testing, but sad to say, if we still a limited number of subnational laboratory that will uh, that are capable of testing the samples, hindi po talaga natin reach yung mass testing. And if you heard our secretary, uh, Harry Rock, is saying, we cannot reach the word mass testing. There is no such thing as mass testing now. And the only way for that, is to increase the number of capacity of the Philippines to do mass testing. O yung damihan natin yung laboratory. Because sad to say, uh, after I leave this uh, tedious process, tedious experience, uh, we are far of, hindi uh, pa tayo tapos, we are far from over, sabi nga, no? And uh, the cases will soon rise and rise unless we do more laboratory. And on this case, ang affected talaga in terms of teaching is the school, the learners, and especially the teacher. Now, take a look at this. 
uh, remember on uh, the IATF resolution, no? they are trying to open the school on August 24, 2020. The reality tells us the pandemic is still there. So what the Department of Education tells us, we go online. Okay, we go online. So we do blended learning. We give modular approaches to the student that's, uh, despite this pandemic. But are we really prepared for this one, especially for the public school? Are the government really giving some uh, support? So one thing I've learned last night is that the Manila government is serious that they will implement strict guidelines for learning online despite this pandemic. I received a text from the advisor of my son asking, what is your address? What is your barangay? And I will, this will be included uh, to the list of the students that will receive a tablet. Okay, so meaning this is ser a dead serious uh, matter that the government is also taking. Imagine in Manila, they will plan to give one tablet per student in family, and I guess in other uh, local government. But the, the impact is that when you have a tablet, you must also have what? Internet connection. And in this new normal, uh, we are hard hit with that, with low, uh, low bandwidth, uh, low, uh, uh, slower internet connection. And I guess these are the things that will really affect the school. And if you heard, there are also other schools, small schools that are now already closed because of the pandemic. I heard uh, there are schools in the province that are now closed and who, uh, that they cannot support already the salary of the teachers. That's why they choose to close. And there are also other companies that, that was forced to close because of this pandemic. And I said that this impacts us in terms of the the school system. No, malaki talaga yung effect to ng COVID-19. Especially uh, if we don't hit the target in the testing. So JRU, uh, the JRU is doing a lot of things to prepare one, the school itself, and the rest of the factors. Very good nga rito, uh, we are preparing a summer math camp in junior high school via Zoom cloud meetings. So students, even they are at home, since we have platform that can be utilized, so they are going to what we call a summer activity math camp, no? which involves the student and the teacher. So they will learn uh, mathematics no? in the comfort of their home. And I would like this opportunity no? para magano na rin mag- Mag-advertise. Mag-advertise, okay? Kung wala pang mga school lang inyong mga kapatid, Okay, mga classmates dyan na may mga anak na, you can enroll your students into Jose Rizal University. Just email us. Okay? You can reach us by the numbers below. Or you may visit the www.jru.edu. Okay? So, yan. So, sa mga wala so, Aaron, ako, Yes? Excuse me. Yes, Ma'am Lawrence? Hi, Sir Aaron. Si... Opo, idagdag ko na rin po. Aside from our summer month, my... At, uh, we also have journalistic writing seminar. Yes, we have. Yes. How about in the BT uh, department, Ma'am Prashna? And also, yung, sa research po, um, sa research, meron din po. Yeah. So, this uh, this is our plan for our school. No, We are not left behind. We would like to engage our students, even despite this pandemic. No, Marami kaming ginagawa like this one, activities available for the student. Again, enroll now in JRU or visit www.jru.edu. Okay, that's... Sir Aero, yes? Si Tepes. Uh, actually, we will be... Uh, we will also launch the... Uh, no? Summer camp regarding Rizalian Wizard. Yeah. That is under social studies. Also, we want to enhance their skills in world history and economics. Yeah. So it's so now. Thank you, Ma'am Lawrence and Ma'am uh, Stebe. So uh, we are boasting here our capability as a school and university. You know, we are not left behind this pandemic. How about the learners? Okay, ito nga yun. There are school closure during pandemic. That's a very uh, uh, alarming impact of the pandemic. For the learners, okay, one news that I heard is that according to the United Nations, is the pandemic is pushing millions more into child labor. So we know that our country is a third world country. And sabi nga ng DepEd, if the teacher cannot teach the student, it is the role of the parent to teach them. 
no during these trying uh, trying times but the problem is if the parent is, is not willing to teach the student no mahirap yun and therefore some countries are, are reporting uh, child labor instead of going to school they push their child into labor industry pinagtatrabaho na lang okay instead of going to school because of in inability or access to the online platform and that's a very alarming issue now that really impacts our uh, educational uh, system dito sa pilipinas although there are little uh, reported cases may mga ganyan ng mga kaso that instead going to school why not uh, sell a uh, vegetable to the market since we cannot afford going online but again i'm saying that our local government units are doing their uh, their their part to make sure no one left behind this pandemic and for the teacher and for the teacher like us we know that this is a new normal and one thing i would like to tell everyone that we have to embrace the new normal okay in this extraordinary time we should be the one to to show to the world that despite this uh, pandemic we are the leading uh, personality that will make uh, the the world uh, make a, a better world ikana diba we must embrace the reality that this is already an online learning uh, class that this will be a new uh, platform to us or i can say a very unorthodox to us no, and and I, I believe uh, we are very versatile person that once we do with uh, these things every day we can uh, we can make a better living and magiging parte na ito na ating pamumuhay. And that's all I think. And if you have questions, and I guess this is now open for questions now. Thank you, Aaron, for your very meaty presentation. Um, you have gone very far, far, far from 2011 until now. So. You are one of our promising scientists in our country. And hopefully, this will not be the end of your quest for knowledge. But it's still, you know, you will still continue doing it. Okay. Anyone who has a question? Hi, ma'am. Good morning. Good afternoon. This is Ro from yes. JRU. Yes, ma'am. I actually posted my question oh. a while ago. Um, it's about the asymptomatic person. Uh, I didn't grasp the first part of Ellen's talk, but my uh, so my question is about: Is there a possibility for a for an asymptomatic to have um, to become immune to the to the virus? Hello, ma'am. Okay, so you're talking about asymptomatic person, ma'am, to become immune to the virus. Yes, po. Sorry, I did not grasp the, the grasp the first part of your. Ah, talk. okay, that's fine. Okay, this is the catch. Okay. For you to become immune to the virus, you must develop antibodies first, okay? So these antibodies are secreted by our immune cells. So during the events that you have, uh, events that you catch this virus, your body starts to create that immune uh, response, you know, producing antibodies. And for you to become immune, you must able to eliminate first the virus to your body. So magkakaroon ka ngayon ng mga antibodies. The sad thing is that you can still be reinfected. So there's no such thing as an immunity for this virus. The only immunity for this virus is the vaccine. Okay. To get the vaccine, yes. right? And scientifically, I believe that there's no way for us to make our immune system stronger. Okay? Because we believe yeah, drinking vitamin C, sleeping on time will make us more stronger and more immune, uh, make our immune system strong but i disagree with that okay the only thing that makes our immune cells or immunity to become strong is to get vaccine and that mm -hmm. vaccine is really infected for uh, effective for immunity okay Kaya, there are really cases of covid19 that despite they're staying at home they're still get infected Minsan nga, lalabas ng one time eh. Okay, they are healthy, no, but at the end of the day, they get infected. No, you will not be immune unless we get the vaccine. That's why we are pushing no classes, no vaccine. Because that's the only way we are we will be immune. Okay. So maybe to say, Aaron, sorry, uh, um follow up 
to my first question. Does it mean to say that this asymptomatic uh, person will eventually will have these uh, symptoms? For how, for how long? Uh, okay, for, for your question. Time? Uh, for your question, ma'am, we have two types of person who have COVID-19. One is asymptomatic. One is symptomatic. Okay, there are person once they have the virus inside the body, we, they they don't really show any signs or symptoms of COVID-19. Okay. okay, for the first few days. So, ito talaga yung mga wala talaga. Okay, however, there are most of the uh, there are also a number of cases na symptomatic sila that will turn to symptomatic. Okay, mm, so okay. magiging obvious na yon. But on Cebu cases, laboratory of Cebu, most of the tested positive there are asymptomatic. Asymptomatic sila, no? I think thousand, ano? They're staying at home, walang symptoms, walang ubo, no? But they have the virus into the body. Okay, how can you acquire that one if you just stay at home? Ah, yeah, that's the big question, okay? How can one that, acquire that? That will probably answer... Uh, we contribute it to the community. If you're still not going outside, but you have some, let's say you you go to the garden, you you water your plant, and you have a neighbor who usually go out. Remember, uh, this is a droplet, no? Although di kayo nagipag-usap, baka there's chance of ano transmitting the droplet from the air going to your location. That's why it's very mysterious. Why there are some people still get infected even they don't go out of the house premise. Okay, about the about the droplets. Ilang minutes? Minutes ba tinatagal mo yung pag -tran I, I mean, hindi ko siya masabi kung paano, pero ano ba yun? Gaano ba siya katagal? Bago, nas hindi naman kasi siya airborne, di ba? Hindi, and this is, this is not airborne. Droplet transmission. Oh, okay. Okay, gaano katagal yung virus na bubuhay pag ganon? If I'm not mistaken, according to the study in US, okay, there are uh, when the person sneezes or cough, so you're releasing respiratory secretion, yung mga droplets, no? If I'm not mistaken, they can still uh, on the air. For I don't know the I forget the time they will spend on the air. Okay? Yung droplet na yun will stay for, if I'm not mistaken, 10 minutes in the surface. Depending on the surface or the material na nag stay yung, dumapo yung virus. Okay? Uh, meron akong nabasa dyan sa, doon sa mga, iba ko pang mga presentations sa, uh, ano, na when you are sneezing, direct kung one meter dapat ang uh, distance nyo. But that is like, ideally, walang air, wala kang electric fan. Kasi pag there is electric fan, there is a possibility na mas mabilis ang transfer ng droplet from mm -hmm. one person to another. Na-imagine yun ba yun na pag may electric fan, tapos nag-sneeze, na mas, uh, mas madaling mong ma-feel yung mga droplets na, na, na ano ng isang tao sa'yo. And then another one is then... The material that you are, when that uh, droplet is uh, dropped or placed in a different material, medyo meron siyang katagalan like yung mga doorknobs, mga metals would really make it uh, like five days. Tapos yung mga plastics would be two days, kaya pag nag-grocery ka, dapat uh, you expose it yeah, expose it for in the sun first before placing it inside your house kung may mga delivery kayo kailangan naka uh, radiate muna siya diyan sa labas kasi para meron siyang na, nahihit muna siya or you also wash your groceries before putting it in your refrigerator now if you will be inside an air conditioned room like uh, air conditioned, it will take you like eight hours for that virus to to die. Tapos, ano pa? Kung nasa eleva elevator ka, because it is uh, metal, surrounded with metal, that is also dangerous. So, yung mga naka-stay sa condo, talagang mahirap din yung uh, exposure nyo doon sa walls ng mga 
elevators nyo. So, it takes a lot of time for that virus to be killed, even in an open surface. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Ma'am, one more. How about sa clothes? How long will it uh, stay sa clothes po? Um, sa clothes? Kasi ano siya eh, uh, mga two, uh, two days ba? Kasi depende sa type ng cloth mo. Uh, kaya... Yeah, depende uh, on the, the materials. material kasi madam ang uh, attachment ng virus. So kaya nga di ba ang sabi nila, once you go out and you come in, you have to go directly to the shower room. Tapos kailangan mong shed off lahat ng mga damit mo and then wash it uh, before going and socializing with your family members. All right, po ma'am. Thank you so much. So it's really uh, scary virus. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Truly. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Aaron. Any more questions po from the group? Good afternoon po. This is Marby from uh, UAM. Hi. Shout out nga pala, Marby. Marby is a medical student <laughs> in a future nephrologist. Oh, <laughs> Hi, good afternoon po. So, ayun, sir, may question lang ako kasi um, sabi mga tedious process yung PCR and um, kasi yung news ngayon nga na parang ang daming cases kagad, may fresh and old, is that directly related to it? Na yung kulang, konti lang yung facilities noon, tapos ngayon lang nag-boom, kaya nag-catch up lang ngayon? Or talagang meron, may factor na mas tumadami yung cases, mas marami din silang backlog? Kasi nakakalito na po actually kung ano yung fresh and old. Parang nakakapanik din kasi yung balita na makikita mo 22,000 something na ganun. So, is that something related po sa yung kakulangan ng facility? Gano'n katagal ba ang isang PCR processing? And yung personal po, Na okay. Sige, thank you, Marby. First, I would like to answer a question. How long talaga yung PCR process? Kung masipag ang uh, isang scientist or a molecular biologist, tatagal yan, ang RNA extraction will last for an hour, siguro three hours. No? Dere-derecho, walang ihian. Okay? What I experienced, talaga walang tayo yan. 48 hours, process na lahat ng result. However, Ilang samples ang isang loading ng PCR machine ah, sa RITN? Sa PCR machine, ma'am, it depends on the brand. In every PCR machine, there are 96 well plate. May mga butas yun. Okay? At hindi nyo pupunuin yun. Usually, 40 ang maximum ang nilalagay mo. The rest ay bakante. Because you, all, uh, you have a sample that is a positive. Positive sample, negative in the sample of the patient. And you need to correlate the result of the PCR to that. Kaya medyo matagal, uh, Marby, no? I cannot speak to myself, but what, what I experience is that is talaga yung, ano, yung kakulangan ng uh, uh, national laboratories na, uh, sub-national laboratory. Okay? Uh, sa RITM, kung pupunta ka dyan, libo-libo na ang pinaprocess dyan. And due to the strict implementation ng ng ISO talagang hindi po pwedeng hindi maproseso lahat diyan okay at the same time in other subnational uh, the only problem i see is that more swab center and dami nating swabbing center actually and dami uh, less subnational laboratories that makes uh, the result uh, hindi siya nare-report agad, no? nababaklag. Kaya magkakaroon ng fresh at yung mga new, ah, ano, yung fresh at yung old cases. Doon ko nakikita eh. Maraming swabbing center, but the uh, confirmatory centers are less. I guess so, we have already extended for 12.35. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. may I ask Sir Nelson to wrap this up so we could have our lunch? Individual lunch. <laughs> Okay, so maraming salamat sa Reron, maraming salamat sa sa inyo, mga participants, i-out ko lang akong video. So, if you're going to take a look at yung, yung mga next day, you can see na sa so, Reron presented the science and technology of the virus and its detection. We also see yung kanyang experience. So, bukod sa science, meron pa yung, kung baga, we, Sir is able to humanize the science in the person of someone who is in the field. So we could also see that the coffee talks natin dito, what we can get is 
Yung mga kwento, hindi lang nagiging kwento na, kundi nagiging involved na tayo. Kasi someone from the community is there. Someone from the community was, or should we say, in the front line. So nagiging problema kasi natin minsan sa Pilipinas. Ay, sila lang yan eh. Hindi totoo yan. Gawa-gawa lang ng gobyerno yan. Pero makikita natin, ay, totoo ito. Nangyari ko sa kasama na. Halimbawa na lang, sa community dito sa Cavite, 10 kilometers yung layo ng community na nai-report na merong positive values. I mean, positive sa COVID. Matatakot na yung community kasi alam na nila. Pero kung nireport nila yung sa Mindanao, sa Davao, wala kang paki kasi malayo sa iyo. So, wrapping up, maraming salamat sa Aaron, uh, sa mga non-science major natin na isip pa ng mga Kung baga may dagdag tayong kaalaman sa mga terms, bakit ganito yung nangyayari. So, hindi tayo makikinig, hindi tayo makikinig sa mga fake news. Nakarinig natin kay Sir Aaron, ito yung totoong nangyayari. So, yan lang and maraming salamat. So, Sir Mambit, baka meron kang closing remarks sa atin. Uh, si Sir Aaron, meron bang closing remarks before I close yeah. this? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. First of all, maraming salamat. And uh, for those of uh, my colleagues from the JRU, thank you very much for you, having you this time. Ma'am Rowe, Ma'am Francia, Ma'am Estevez, Ma'am De Guzman, and Ma'am Karen, uh, who else are present here. I uh, would like to tawagin sila, no? Uh, Ma'am Lalaine, Ma Sir Layage, and kayo yung mga nasa kanina pa, no? Na nawala lang. So, maraming salamat for your time. And also sa kay Sir Ryan Lansaka ng Idol ng Chemistry Group. Okay. Thank you very much, Sir Ryan. Okay. Thank you po. I work with UST, no? siguro mga one month in the laboratory. No? Doon sa RS, ano, RS, RSCL niya. No? Mga one, ano lang, one month siguro. Matigas daw ulo ko kaya pinalis agad ako. So thank you Sir Ryan. And to my classmate, batchmate, John Ernest Pesalbon. Thank you for your time. Joel Asansa, thank you for, for your time. Sa mga guests, Sir Jonathan, thank you for your uh, time. Sir uh, Ma'am Neri, thank you again. No? Gusto ko banggitin sila one by one. Uh, Ma'am Cherry, thank you. Ma'am Eileen, thank you. Thank you. And also to my great, great advisors, Sir Nelson, Ma'am Vic Marie Camacho, I really miss this time. I wish I can go back 2011. <laughs> no, I wish uh, makabalik ako ng PNU. No, Doon na lang ako mag-PPHD. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi ka na namin tanggapin kasi I think you are more um, geared towards uh, pure science PhD. So ako na ang magsasabi sa'yo, you go more into PhD, mechanical engineering if you want that. Then I will, we will support you in the university. Congratulations again for your master's degree. We are so proud of you kung saan ka na ngayon at uh, very thankful ako na uh, you shared a lot ng ngayon at saka when I told when I asked you to have a sharing with us wala ka talagang kakyeme-kyeme you said yes agad yes, and I'm yes. so ano humbled by your humility and how you have already um been to a greater heights in your education. Kung si Ryan man ay magaling sa education side ng chemistry you one uh you, including CJ and the rest of those people, are also pursuing uh, the pure side of chemistry. Hindi po namin yan kinakaila because we need a lot of science and technology people in our country. Uh, we need science teachers na more able to explain uh, a lot of concepts and to inspire more young generation to be in our um, field like science so we continue to promote science education wherever we are at uh, god bless your life i owe you lunch talaga aaron and thank you kahit na uh, my problem tayo technically today you were able to go from mars to jupiter just to present your uh, talk and uh, we learned a lot from you and Thank I also, you very much. Uh, isa na lang, ma'am, uh, to the rest, no? 
uh, I would like to also to to encourage uh, more uh, more risk take uh, be, be more risk taker. No? Siguro kailangan siguro natin talaga yan this time. No? That this uh, uh, during a pandemic, we really have to go out of our comfort zone. No, try to see other things that nangi tayo doon, you know. And at the end of the day, uh, you will just be smiling and oh, wow. When I grow up, I have something stories to tell to my uh, to my apo, to my young kids. Right now, I'm telling the story, and my wife is really happy, saying, uh, "At least you are part of this pandemic. No? You are part of the solution of this kind." And yeah. I'm very proud of myself saying that. At least at at least few days lang, ilang linggo or wala pang buwan, no? I was able to witness how the world changed. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. You are one of our trailblazers in the pure science. And uh, take care and hugs to your wife and your son. And goodbye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. 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 Thank you.